I'm like, listen, I'm, I will listen to any trainer who has a disagreement with me. You, I will listen to you. I will have you on the podcast, but you have to work with the dogs that we work with. And until you do, it's over. There is, there is no argument here. Oh, first thing that comes to mind, the Siberian Huskies. Um, uh, independent. independent. Oh, <laughs> bro, bro. That Great. was magic. That was that kind was of magic. magic. <laughs> do you get recognized everywhere? Yeah, bro. But I don't get recognized that much at all, dude. Too. I need more stuff, dude. I need a look. Now, like literally. Podcast number 15. Who's this dude? What's going on? <laughs> hey, double. look at this guy. Are we doing this? Are we uh, well, being you. dog daddy-ish? <laughs> bro, I'm not going to be. I don't know how you do a podcast with your. I'm, these are like too dark. Really? Yeah. I think I'm just used to it. You must be like, used to it. Plus, those I wear are them all glasses. the time, like on the plane. Everything. Oh my god. Plus, they're probably good you know glasses. What it is now I did it to myself, so like now people kind of they uh, expect to always see me like this. I feel like it would be a shock if they see me in public and I don't have sunglasses. So I literally keep my sunglasses on. That's awesome. Time. It's like a, it's your look, dude. Yeah. Uh, Joe, like even when I meet someone for the first time, and if they're going to like come over to hang out or something, yeah, they have to wait until I'm home before I take my sunglasses off. <laughs> They have to wait. <laughs> they have to wait until like I'm home and literally out of the public. It says, can I see your eyes? I'm like, not until we get to the house. Like if, if I go out and invite some friends to join my group or something, you know, or yeah. I left, like, yeah, they have to wait until I'm away from the crowd. Unless I feel comfortable. But if I feel like random people that follow me are going to see me in public, they yeah. have to see me with the glasses on. I've seen you. I've seen you without glasses. Well, I videos? do like, in, so my followers, they actually will see me like that. But because of like, the masses of people that are watching my video, my training videos, you know, yeah. like in my stories and stuff, like it's not going to get as many million views as I get in the videos, like oh, in my yeah, training yeah. videos. Yeah. So when people just like, maybe they don't follow me, but they will like, they have seen a lot of my videos. I just feel it's kind of weird because it, you know, it's uh, that shocker. They're like, Oh, I have never seen you without sunglasses before. Yeah. It, even my outfits is the same thing. I have to wear, like, I have to be like in character all the time. Cause I have done one time where I go to the store. And then someone will look at me like really strange, almost like I'm dying sick or something. They're like, I have never seen you dressed down before. Yeah. And then now I feel like that pressure, if I don't want to hear people and people looking at me a certain way, like, why am I not myself that day? Then I have to like, keep it up. You know, otherwise so I have, to, otherwise people are going to look at me judging, thinking that maybe I'm like not well or something. So That's so funny. There's like <laughs> a reason. Mind, do you mind just sh shifting a, a shig in there? Try to be about a fist from the microphone. Yeah. I'm never a fist from it. And no one can hear me. Yeah, just he, he likes to chill and like lean back. Oh, thank you. I actually kind of like the sunglasses thing. Like, you kind of feel a little. I don't know. Mine are polarized, so I can't see the screen. Oh, you yeah. know, like if someone is saying something weird and you can just be rolling your eyes, they don't know. That's a good point. <laughs> I yeah yeah. All right, we have Dog Daddy. This is our normal podcast. He is our guest. We are gonna just see where this thing goes with dog daddy. He's a big star. <laughs> you are a big star, bro. I was looking like, you know, we were both talking before this and we're like, we don't like, you're not a big connoisseur of dog training on YouTube. I'm not, you're busy. I'm busy. I got three kids. You're traveling the world. Um, but like, I did see how many followers you have 2.6 million on YouTube. He's got tons on TikTok. Like he's you're doing it, man. So yeah, I mean, people, you know, people have always been really interested in anything that I do with dogs, like even growing up, even in, like just in public in general. I never cared about social media. And that's something that is kind of interesting. All my followers are from a year and a half ago to today. Like a year and a really? half ago on YouTube, I had 60,000 followers. And then I did not, this Facebook, Facebook page is new. Uh, my uh, TikTok is new. So everything is within a year and a half or newer. And I have over 7 million followers right now. But it's because I decided to be doing it full time and really commit to like posting these videos. You know, I, I'm doing everything that I do now, like what I was doing growing up. Like it's nothing have changed, but I never cared for social media. So um, I went viral before, but I never stayed consistent with posting videos. And um, but now when I realized like, OK, people are really interested and intrigued with what I do, um, you know, the little bit of like news media that I got, like. People, they would call me like, wow, there's so much interest in everything that we post about you. And over the year, it took me years to realize, okay, I'm going to do this full time. And, you know, that's definitely something that I don't know what it is, really. It's like it's a combination of things. But the people that get it, they get it. Some people, you know, are not into it. But uh, the people that follow me and support, like, I guess they feel the same way. They 
just understand like what I'm where I'm coming from. Yeah, people mm -hmm. like you, man. I've I've seen some of your comments and like I saw a video you posted and people are just like so supportive. I mean, they're mm -hmm. always supportive of you, but like Yeah, it's crazy because I get I'm very controversial, you know, in general, yeah. just speak, like that I get it. Uh so I do get different types of opinions, but at the end of the day, one thing that I learned is uh, the haters are always louder. So when you see all just supporters, that's actually the minimum amount of support that I actually get because I feel like people that are genuinely supporting someone, they don't necessarily want drama. They just support you. They like you. They they would just they would go up out of their way to help you. And so there has been instances where like I actually needed people to show up to like a totally. meeting or to sign letters or to be testimonials for me. Um, you know, they are always there. They really will go out of their way to really um I mean it's been times where I was shocked with like people flying across the country just to come to a meeting and say like why I should you know, be able to do what I do and have a license when haters were being loud about it. Like, no, he don't allow him to do it. And with no, you know, nothing good to show for it, like no good reason. Yeah. You need that. I need that. We need that from our people sometimes to, to right. have our back and people get that. And they like, understand that like dog daddy needs me to be supportive or Joel does or whatever. And because he's, they're getting all this, you know, this, this, incoming from the other side for whatever reason and people will have your back if we do the work right if you post the videos if you try to help people if you put yourself out there right it's a matter of being back. consistent you know like i really had to stay firm with what i believe and what i do and then of course taking the feedback from those that are actually around me um you know when you hear every client that you train you hear the feedback and you know in your heart that you helped them and you saved them and my clients are so genuine like when i it's this it it's hard because you know it's not filmed i don't film every second of my day so people don't get to yeah. see it. but the my the fact that my clients is very common that they will you know like an hour of my training is like fifteen hundred dollars and people are like wow that's crazy but they don't even realize that i have clients that will come and tip me a thousand they're Bro. like and i will feel like i have done i, I would generally feel like it's I feel bad almost like because some of them with the dogs don't even I know to me they seem like they don't need that much but because it helps them so much and they're so genuinely happy yeah they'll be like here's another thousand and they're just so grateful and then so i take that home with me instead totally. of what people are saying online that they don't really understand you know everything that goes into what i do bro one i am not charging enough money thank you for that <laughs> um two um there's only so many people in this country that can do what you do. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to money, many people realize that and they will, they will pay a certain well, amount and, of money. You know, this is the thing too. Like, and some people say like, they don't do it for the money and this and that. Like when I started, I just always loved what, what I do now. Like I, yeah. I, I do it for free. I, all my training is also free for shelters and rescues. Like I have never charged, even when I was sleeping on my couch, like in my car, homeless, I never to this day was willing to charge to a shelter or yeah. rescues. Yeah. So I have always been free and continues to be free and will always be free because I know that's like the best way to help dogs in general, not yeah. just the one or two that I train with the clients, but if I'm educating the shelter owners and the people that run it and the people that work there, they're going to be helping the most dogs. So I have always done it for free, but also even with the clients, when I, came back to the US. I was born here, but I grew up in Brazil. When I came back, I didn't even want to stay here. I lived on a farm in Brazil. So I just knew how to understand dogs and communicate with them. Yeah. And then I started to learn um, different techniques. It was like every day, even today, you can learn a new technique, a new method to train a dog. But the, the base of my training is just understanding the dogs, like how they understand us or that I, I know exactly what they need. And then I know what method or technique would work best for them. Um, but I would just do that because that's what I love to do. And I came here and people would ask me after seeing me work with any dog, they'd be like, help me help my dog be disobedient, you know? And it's so ironic because also it leads to another topic. So when I was doing that, I would go and charge them $20 because that's just the number that would come. Like if I'm getting $20, that's it's it. Nice. It's, it's yeah. enough. Yeah. And I would do that for $20 and there, that was not for an hour. I didn't mind being there for three hours. It yeah. was just, I was so grateful that actually for the first time I was appreciated for what I was doing because yeah. in Brazil dog training wasn't a big thing so I had no one to look up to I didn't have social media I never had a phone until I was almost 19 years old mm. after I had moved here so never had a phone didn't have internet um so 
when people started, and then I was just seeing as like this guy that have all these dogs, like you know, he's not gonna really get anywhere because he doesn't want, he doesn't like school. He just wants to play with dogs all day, and his dogs will pay attention to me. But when I came here, and people were like actually appreciative of what I was doing, and they, I could feel it. They like they were intrigued and involved and like loving what I did. Like, but there's such an energy that I hadn't felt before. So just being there for twenty dollars, spending three hours with them, the biggest reward was actually the fact that I was appreciated and understood almost, you know, with what I was doing. Yeah. And and you know what? That's actually really smart what you did. Like I'm not going to charge that much. I just want to get what I said at the beginning was I, I bought the I have a facility, okay, a little bit away from here. And but I would travel anywhere for like more than 20 bucks but like if oh no i would do a free consultation because i knew mm -hmm. if i got in the door they would like what i did plus i knew i had to get my hands on dogs then i'll i'll talk to dog trainers they're like yeah i charge like per mile i have to drive i'm like you're just starting right. like what are you doing like do it for cheap so that you can get your hands on dogs the thing about you caesar milan me some some other guys is that we've had our hands on so many dogs that it comes through on video right and until you get that you look you just don't look right on video right well and the thing i think uh, for me was just like matter of being lucky too because i genuinely did it that way but it wasn't taught out it wasn't like oh i just need to train more dogs because i would not even make videos i never made videos in the beginning people would always be like oh my god and then what happened is i would go to help them because the dog just jumps on people, pulls on the leash, or doesn't sit, doesn't listen, you know? And it was all actually just positive reinforcement training. Yeah. But then they would be like, my dogs don't get along, but that's okay, we drew one at a time. And I'm like, no, they they can get along. Totally. And I would get them to work together. And then it was like, they the owners were like extra happy because they didn't pay me for that. They didn't hire me for that. They didn't think it was possible. They, they were already comfortable living with the dogs living in different rooms in the house. And mm -hmm. I would get them to live together. And then it was all just different things. Like my dog doesn't like to be patted or something. The dog would get, you know, be patted. The dog doesn't let me cut their nails. And so I would help them with those things in addition to the obedience that they actually thought they were mm -hmm. hiring me for. And so now over time, it led to me working with just most aggressive dogs, which was a very organic. Everything that I yeah. do was very organic. I never came here and totally. planned, I'm gonna become a dog trainer. I just grew up with this interest and then it led to everything that I do now. But the aggressive dogs is the same thing. There's no course available that actually it specifically teaches people, you know, to train aggressive dogs, unless someone is doing it independently. Like there's no actual official, you know, school that you go to. At least to. not a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's going to show just dogs that really are super aggressive and reactive. And then you're specifically, you know, handling those types of dogs. Uh, so it's something that you do have to learn on your own because I think all the, what you, a lot of what you get to see out there is just like neutral dogs for yeah. minor like behavior issues, like minor reactive, you know, they can, you can put a, I stopped animal. Anyone that have a serious problem with their dog, which is something also, I get about 200 million views a month combined mm -hmm. with all my platforms. So that's a lot of people's, lots of opinion. But one thing that I learned is the people who have a serious problem at home, which is basically the majority of my clients, this means they cannot walk the dog. The neighbor is calling the police constantly because this dog jumps the fence and attacks them or their dog. Um, they cannot have visitors. They cannot, sometimes they're getting a divorce because the dog literally totally. bites the husband or the wife or they have kids and the dog is attacking them. Yeah. Or they cannot have the, all the dogs that they have together because they're constantly fighting. When you have these serious problems and you try different things and you watch videos and you hire these different trainers and you do six months of that training and you're getting nowhere and you see my videos, you are going to need me. You're going to call me. No one can deny is that my training actually works. Yeah. So they can have, they can say it doesn't work, but it works. The evidence is with the dogs that I train and the clients that I train. You don't see them coming all back and saying like it didn't work, you know? And again, no method works unless they follow through with it. So the, the fact that I have literally trained thousands of dogs just in the last couple of years alone, brand new thousands of dogs, and you don't see just people saying that it doesn't work, is because I explain to them everything they need to do. And if and they see it happening right in front of them and they see how it works. And so the people that follow through with it, and even after just one single training class, which I do, I do not claim that I train a dog in one training class, but I give them so much information and knowledge and repetition of what we're doing that at least just solve the like aggressive reactivity behavior that the dogs have they learn everything that they need to learn and maybe they cannot physically get it done but they know exactly what works so if they're going to look for another trainer they're going to only look for someone that can follow through with what i showed them yeah. because everything else before didn't, didn't work proofs didn't in work. the pudding you know and also i'll talk with my clients a lot about percentages i'll be like mm -hmm. listen you came for one hour we got your dog 70 percent better 
right? Maybe it wasn't hundred percent better, but sometimes it's hundred, sometimes it's less, sometimes mm -hmm. it's 70. Do you know what one, one hour of their time and some money for 70% better? Like it's that's huge. giant. Especially when you can't walk your dog past your neighbors and yeah. your friends and out in public and you can't take them to the vets. You can't have people over, you know, that's huge. And the first thing that I do with all of these dogs that I train, um, they are completely out of control and it's not my fault that people didn't know what they were doing beforehand. So the dog is already out of control if they don't get them on. So when people say that's not how you train a dog, that's just me getting the dog under control. Now, if you disagree, the dog should be under control and not lashing out and jump the fences and attacking the next person outside, then that then you have the right to disagree. But I, I agree with you that that's not how you train the dogs, but I'm not training the dogs in the beginning. I do train. Yeah, I yeah. do all these different trainers. I just all the trainers. I can do agility. I do obedience. I do puppy training. I do tricks. All of that. But what you see in my videos, the videos that you're criticizing, you know, just people criticizing is dogs that I'm just getting them under control. Yeah. They are not dogs that I'm training. They're not capable of being trained at that level. And then if they want to mislead people in saying like you can work around and do management, that is the the most management you can do. Especially also when I'm I am one person and all these dogs that you see would not have someone else that would work with them, you know, to get them where they need to be in time before something worse will happen. Yeah. Which is either they're going to hurt someone or the owner will give up on them because it's just it's just too much. Yeah. Or attack a dog or, you know, so many things like it happens all the time. And the messages that I get because of what I do, it's crazy. Like people wounds in the face, like neck, you know, know, like huge dogs that were killed. Like they'll send me the videos and pictures like, please come help me. And they're people from all over the world. And it's just to think like that, you know, they're dealing with that simply because the dog is on out, completely out of control. They're not under control. Yeah. So. I uh, looked at some of your videos, you know, cause I knew you're coming in and like, I like it. You, you did it like some things the right way. In my opinion, mm -hmm. like the, one of the first videos I went to popular videos is like you and your group of your pack of dogs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I get, this guy can train dogs, he trained his own dog, his own dogs very well. Mm -hmm. That's where I think you're in your element the most. Like I taught a ton of group classes before I ever made a YouTube video. And so like me with a dog and people around and talking and turning and doing the dog while I'm talking mm -hmm. is like a real strong point for me. I don't show it a lot because I don't do classes anymore, but you are in your element as much as anything at that time. I yeah, I think it, I really love that uh, things make sense to people. Like everything that I'm saying, like they understand. Yeah, it you got to put stuff clicks, in real. Registers, uh, and a lot of times they weren't you know, really seeing things that way. And a lot of my, the people that come, the majority of them, like they do get it, they understand, but they want to see the details in person, you know? And so to see them there and see their reactions, like they always like, it makes total sense, you know? And they, they go home, like understanding even more so what I do. Um, yeah. So it's very interesting. Bro, how funny is it though? I was just thinking about this, like in the last month a little bit, cause I'll get these emails or these comments or these questions or people call and they're like, they're like, they think, like I'm not a magician. Mm -hmm. Like I know in a way, like people think you're like, and maybe you think you are something. I don't know. I'm not a magician. Like mm -hmm. I do the stuff based on there's, there's a method to the madness, but like they're there. It's like you, you said it like, they're like, they think I could fix anything and you right. can fix a lot and I can fix a lot. But like there are, there are things that, that, like we're not magicians. There's a method to it. Like right. we're going to take that muzzle off when we've seen A, B, and C. Like it's not. Yeah. I think anything, anything it, that but... people don't understand, it can either be, I think it can go both ways. You know, people see it, see it like as, as magic because it to them is something that they wouldn't be able to do. Yeah. And then I think it can also do where people look at it like, you know, completely different too and don't understand. So they judge it because they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter. I think having a really good understanding of what I'm doing with each dog is what is so important. I do not remove the muzzle of every single dog, but I remove the muzzle of dogs that are yeah. highly reactive, that had been people that bite the owners. But it's just a matter of understanding what where that dog's mind is at that present time. And you need to have worked with thousands of dogs in order to get to that point where you can pop a muzzle off where other people would go, how do you know that dog's not going to attack you? Or for right. me, how do you know that dog's not going to attack Prince when you take the muzzle off? Well, because I saw A, B, and C, and a thousand dogs, you know, 999 of them would not do it at that point. And I think one thing too is that I explain to my clients, like I, 
I don't, it, there's no way to measure the levels, but there's different levels. I feel like as far as body language, you know, yeah. the same body language can mean many different things in combination with other things and like the levels. So when, I feel like when people learn body language through like reading books and, you know, starting it for a little bit, but they haven't really hands on handled thousands of dogs and lived yeah. with dogs. Like I grew up when I didn't have phone or TV or internet, like I was out with my dogs from morning to night, every single day. And yeah. these dogs live on a farm, they would go hunting and like by themselves, they were a legit pack. So I get to learn body, body language, but there's different levels is when someone sees the dog just lick their lips a little bit, they're like, oh, this dog is about to bite at any time. Or you can see the whale eyes and they're looking at like one thing and they think that, you know, it, it just means one specific thing and it can mean so yeah. many different things. Uh, so. It's actually ironic because they would be very hesitant. One thing that I have to say is like this, right? You can put me, one thing that I have um, different with all these people that criticize me is that you can put me on a stage live with anyone, the president, millions of people right sitting right there. And they give me any dog and I would give anyone, that's no, anyone that knows anything about their dog, that dog, I would give them the most common sense information about the dog. I would handle it the best. I would know exactly what the dog is all about. I would be able to do the most with that dog right there in the moment. These people that criticize, they would not really know what to do. If they, if you get a really highly reactive dog, they would just go based on the most common signs that they see and the most common methods that they can use. And so because of that, they wouldn't necessarily be able to know exactly what to do with any given dog. When I say any given dog, you could just bring a dozen different dogs and rotate one by one for me to handle them. And everybody would be like, I want, they would be able to tell that I understand each dog because that's why you get the most results, the most progress with each one. Any of these other people, they would try to apply the same method. And that's why either it doesn't work or it takes so long for them to figure it out. And taking so long um, matters. Things can't take forever. I, I think they this, cannot. No one has that time. This is like my the most frustrating part. Oh, is exactly that. I know. How can you not understand that people have like lives? You know, they have a lifestyle, and maybe you can say like it's it's unfair to unfair to the dog. We can all agree with that, right? But it, but the dogs are already there. So they're already there, they're already living. They have to fit in society. I just this to my clients. They have to learn to fit into society. So when they say like the dog doesn't work with you, the dog is not the happiest there. But if the if the alternative is the dog completely out of control, biting everybody, they can't go out in public, you can't go to work, you can't travel, you can't yeah. visit family. You know, you your dog doesn't let your husband come in the house or your wife come into the house and your kids cannot run and play because your dog is gonna bite them. With all that being, you know, all the dogs in the household fighting, that's not a matter of like getting the dog to choose to stop that. Like you, if there's a way that within minutes you get the dog to start start to understand what is expected from them and it can maintain it from there and it continue to improve. That's you just do like, I don't understand how. I mean, that, it seems like common sense. It seems like something that anyone would know. So that's why I talk about all the trainers. They're brainwashed. But the trainers that talk about it, I have a hard time believing that they don't know what we're saying. I, I know. feel like they know that the, I I, they know it. They don't know how to do what we do. So they lie. Excuses. Because there's no way that they wouldn't understand that. So just millions of dogs that need to literally fit in society today. They have to go to the vets. They have to go for walks. Most of them, a lot of them live in apartments or they have neighbors. They have to walk around distractions. You can't just isolate dogs from people and other animals. So with that being said, and the owners cannot even hold the dog back without being dragged to the ground. How can you say that a method that would take months to years to maybe to see if you even you want to know? Not, you want to know? All right, here's what they, here's what they say. And I don't know if they believe it either. Mm -hmm. They say that's well here 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 here's they believe that animals that 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 they believe that doing anything mean to a dog is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. They don't care if the dog can't go out. They don't care they don't care they don't care yeah. about it. They truly don't because you and me are being mean to the dog. And and they they they, they just that's yeah. the only thing they I think, think so, I think, right? I think at, at, well, so, you know, people have the right to their opinions. I think the only thing that we can do is kind of like point out these things. And it's one of those things, you know, if people are hearing this and they have a dog at home or they have a neighbor that have a dog, a dog that could potentially kill someone or really cause a lot of damage if they got out and you can tell the dog is completely out of control. You know, the hope is that you would understand what we're saying because 
at the end of the day, you could point out all these things, but not being mean to the dogs, but with being firm. That might be a few minutes that's more stressful for the dog because that's what gets the dog under control right there and then in the moment so that at least you're preventing them from being lashing out and like out of control where something horrible can happen at any moment. So they are at least under control. Um, but if you think that because we have to use a firmer approach to just stop that dog on its track right away and then start any type of training that we're going to do and you think that that's not right, then I feel like they have the right to, you know, to their opinion. Um, but it's just, again, you are literally saying, I'd rather my dog be out of control, let it bite someone and then we'll take care of it instead of a few minutes of discomfort because the dog is completely yeah. enabled and out of control. And we, all we're doing is basically restricting, you know, the dog to stop those yeah. behaviors. People get it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the, the majority gets it. Like I use the like um, football analogy, like if, like, like if some random person's like Tom Brady should really twist his wrist a little bit on that. They're like, you're in, you don't know anything. Like he's been through the wars. Like he's going to, you know, I like he he's won Super Bowls. He he got a divorce based on the love of football. Like he's been through the wars. People intuitively know that people have been through the wars who've had that dog that we're nervous of that something's going to happen. And then society knows the the world kind of knows. And so, like, we need to keep what, doing what we're doing because we believe in what we're doing. Yeah. Well, the thing, too, is that they manipulate people. Yeah, because, uh, you know, if you if, think about it, that what we're seeing here, I think anyone with common sense would understand. So when they have a chance, yeah. when they have a chance to see this, they understand. But when you when people only see the video of the worst part of the dog and you say you classify this is how he trains dogs. Yeah. Then people are like, oh, that's bizarre. That's crazy. Not, that should never be allowed. But once in, if it was to be in court, or that's why I'm never, I'm, that's why I'm not a criminal. That's why I'm not in jail. That's why I have never been arrested. You know, that's why there's no charges. Because anyone, if, if they were to investigate it based on someone did a report, like this is how he handled the dog, but they understand that this dog was literally just a few minutes before on top of the owner about to, mm -hmm. you know, attack the owner, uh, then it completely changes everything. So I think like they manipulate people to believe that we're just evil, mean, harsh with the dogs just because we we go up to just random dogs and then we make them reactive just so that we can correct for show. And it's like, that's what big, makes the biggest difference because we said this a few times already, anyone that have a dog that's completely out of control and it, you know, ironic, my clients think that my approach is the softest the dogs have to deal with. Right. So yeah, no one that, has a problem. That's why it's so bizarre. No, they actually tell me like he the was clients. so gentle and calm because these dogs, uh, there's no other easy way to approach them. So it, people, a lot of trainers they actually tried before they're like more, they use, you know, corrective methods. They actually have been harsher with the dogs because they don't know what they were doing. Yeah. So they actually were aggressive towards the dog. They were hanging this dog. It's like the least I don't, invasive exactly. we, you have to be. It's just that, you know, to you, it may look dramatic because you don't understand the circumstances of that particular dog and the, yeah. the, the situation. But the owners understand. That's why people are like, well, how can the owner watch that? The, anything that will help this dog, the owner is going to be okay with because they have already tried everything else. They they know exactly what they have in their hands. Yeah. And then my approach, no one would be able to go there and do with any less than what I do because yeah. I don't really go after the dogs. I, I'm actually pretty calm. When yeah. you, you know, it's like, they have to be restricted. They have to follow direction, but it's the very bare minimum to get them to actually move forward. Totally. And like, you know, I mean, if you've dealt with a lot of owners, which I believe you have, like me, like you have to sort of, you have to look at that owner and you have to read that owner and you have to be like, okay, I need to explain this before I do it. Oh yeah. And yeah, then you take fine. the dog and then you got to go, okay, hey, just so you know, and like some people you just have to massage, mm -hmm. you know, as you know. Yeah. It, it's luckily because I'm so transparent with my videos. I do That's get true. most people that come. Yeah, they know exactly too. what you expect. I, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, but I true. have had a couple of people that, for some reason, they didn't expect. You know, um, what needs to be done. So they come with the hunters. They have a uh, retractable leash. They're just holding back. You know, they're very babying the dog. The dog have a lot of anxiety. And so when I anything new, they're like, "Oh my god!" And I and I do have to tell. And and I'm really good at educating people. And I don't tell them they have to use anything. So anything that I use, if I use a prong collar, anything that I'm going to use. The owner has to say a verbal yes. They want to try it. So mm -hmm. they all want to try it because I explain to them first how I use it, why I use it, why would I put on their dog that they may they never thought the dog could benefit from one. But I tell them exactly all the benefits. And then they're only trying it for a few minutes. If they don't want it, they can tell me to stop at any time. Mm -hmm. But I tell them, you're going to see all these other dogs go home with more results. 
Anything that anyone else would be able to do with a honors, I can do probably better and I would do it for you here. But if you want the best results you can get, we're going to use whatever best tools. I think it's best for your particular dog. So I tell them that way. And so it's all their choice and they understand what, you know, and it's a, a for most, I never use tools actually to correct the dogs. So in my videos, sometimes you can, you can see a dog with a prone collar being reactive. They were handled to me already like that. I never say put a e collar, put a prone collar on your dog and then give me the Bro, leash. Bro, isn't that funny? Like I do the same thing and like I, I watch other videos and they're like, well, you need to do, have this tool. Like I have people show up all the time and I'm just like, okay, like I'm not into bungee leashes, but like I'll take it and I'll use it if nothing else to show them, hey bro, like this isn't working. Like, but I don't care what the dog's in. Like I've never really worried about that right. too much. The, the method only, the is only the thing method. that I would change is if the dog, if I feel like they're going to pull back from the harness or, the, or like a flat oh, if it's collar. Unsafe. Right. And then totally. I'll put a slip lead. That's the only thing. Yeah. And then as we get the dog to understand like that way that you help them understand a little bit of leash pressure. It takes just a few minutes. Then usually I go to a prone collar for most dogs. I don't use e-collars I, I, in group classes. It would never be effective. You know, I don't use e-collars in general. I'm not against them, but uh, yeah, I feel like too. trainers would, if they would use them, they would have to be really good and careful and like really take their time, you know? So I, but prone collars, they can usually transition the dog to a prone collar within a few minutes and have them really comfortable with yeah. it. Uh, but I, again, I never put any tools to correct the dogs. I take them with whatever they have on them yeah. when they show up to the class. Which is good. That's like, listen, the method, the um, energy, the um, like what we're doing is like, that's the thing. It's not the product. The product mm -hmm. helps. And there are some dogs that you just have to, like I'm a pretty big gentle leader guy or, or head harness guy. And uh, I'll, I'll be like, listen, the method's going to get us 70% there. Then this tool is going to get us 20% there. Now we're at 90% within an hour. Like how, mm -hmm. if, if we're there, how happy are you? And they're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And so, you know, and I think feel like everybody uses a uh, tool is a little bit different too. Yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of prone callers. And then when I explain it to my clients, a lot of times they're really surprised. I'll get like a dog that's completely shut down, afraid of everything, not aggressive at all. And I'll recommend a prone call. And they're like, really? They, they're shocked. And I show them because the way that I use the prone call is clearly for communication, clear communication. It's just to communicate with the dog. And they they see and they're amazed how the dog is able to follow directions with just two fingers. So there's no correction, there's no pressure, there's no tension on the, on the dog's neck other than the sensation of the collar. Yeah. But unless people see it for themselves and understand how I use it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to them. And one of the big powers of changing the tool to a prong, to a whatever, is the change. It's just the uniqueness of it, right? We're yeah, going to do I mean, something different. That's, a, that's different. a really good point. A lot of people don't think about that, but it's just, totally. it, yeah, I was just uh, at a wolf sanctuary and it's really interesting mm -hmm. you know, how like the same thing works there. Uh, they, they have a rescue, dog rescue that they run on the property. Mm -hmm. And whenever they get a dog that won't let anyone near them, they literally bring them around the wolves and like bobcat, not bobcats, um, some other type of wildcats and they walk in between the fences of them where all those animals are surrounded. The dog gets so scared because they have never seen it and it bonds with the, the person who is holding the leash. Yeah, that's cool. And, and it makes total sense because that's why a lot of rescue dogs are so bonded with the owners and they like, you know, they think the dog is being thankful. But in reality, the dog is just like, that's the first thing that they saw that they could glue stick to and that was like support for them. And they bonded, they bond like that because they feel like you're the savior. It makes sense. But it's not because it took them out of the shelter. It's because they were so scared of the environment. Yeah. And you gave them comfort. Yeah. I did a video a few months ago. It was with the two cattle dogs. Mm -hmm. And like they hated each other, these two cattle dogs. Then I got Prince in the mix and they said, Oh yeah, we hate him more than we hate each other. And they try and they're like, let's let's be friends. Let's be their brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And let's be brother and sister again. Cause like let's get this guy out of here. And it was this bonding moment, got him back together with yeah. that bonding moment. And then we got Prince out of there. The bond was still there. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's really same, interesting. Same it's, it's very, yeah. And, and actually that helps, uh, happens a lot in my classes as well. That's why I have to remove the dog from the owner because the dog is really afraid of everything. And when they are in the middle of all that chaos that's going on around in my training class and it's just me and them, they come closer to me. Yeah. But if, the only reason I do that is because I want to demonstrate to the owners how to handle the dog. So my, I always tell my clients to my alternative would be, I would have to be shouting at you like, Turn to the right, to the right, go to the left. Oh, yeah, it's it, so hard. And tra dog training is art. You have to learn. Even hands on, and as you know, like with clients, you have to tell them over and over again and practice hands on. So if I'm to do this from across the room yelling as the dog is barking at me, we know it's not going to generate results. Bro, and it doesn't work because um, there's two learning curves happening. There's the dog's learning curve at that moment, and there's the owner's learning right. curve at that moment. Do you know how hard two learning curves time. are at the yeah. same time? Do you get recognized everywhere? Yeah. Bro. 
but I don't get recognized that much at all, dude. Too. I need more stuff, dude. I need a look now. Like literally coming, you know, here like out of the, I'm mean, like rush into the lot that was running late, and yeah, they like stopping for pictures. But you're yeah. like a legit celebrity, dude. <laughs> But no, the the thing that I don't like is when people just sneakily taking pictures. Like that's my biggest Bro, pet. It is sneaky. What do you call it? Pet peeve. Pet peeve. Pet peeve. I yeah. worked at SeaWorld, and they would some you'd get pictures with people, right back in the day. I worked there, right? And you're in what too? And people go, oh, and then sometimes they just go, I go, oh yeah, you want a picture? Yeah, come over here, let's. And they go, no, just of you. And I'm like, <laughs> you're just like, how do you stand? You're just like, okay, you're in like a <laughs> wetsuit, which is very kind of revealing in a way, and you're just like. Like what? What do I do? No, people do it. People well, do it all the time. I don't mind. I don't mind it at all. It's like when people being sneaky. Like I'll be at a restaurant and there'll be this this lady. Like, yeah, you, you don't know, know what they're gonna like, do. I'm with right that. there. I know, and it happens. And all they the don't want to bother you though. Like I'll even so get you never that know. Sometimes. That's the thing because you know, uh, like I don't know because people yeah, have also taken pictures and be like, I heard him say this and that and that. And I'm like, bro, that's that conversation it's never a, happened. Yeah, it's a weird thing with well, like. This, if they have a picture of you, it may look more legit. It's like they were there, so they know what they're talking about. And so they can say anything. And people, you know right. how people believe everything. But if they have a picture of you yeah. there, they'll be like, oh, she was there. She, I believe that she really said that. And it's like. I mean, have you thought, though, of your mind to a lesser degree? Because I'm not as recognizable. And for a variety of reasons, right? Um, I'm a little more low key, like family and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I do a little less, like just cruising around and video on it and stuff but like your your deal is a trippy deal like you it's like in a way like you just have to take the flack but like your deal like you're recognizable you have a ton of social media stuff it's like you have a you have a crazy life yeah i feel like it's definitely i talk to my manager about this all the time because it's kind of like weird you know it's like um i don't know i feel like I, I don't I don't know if it's what I do, or, but even before, like, you know, like the like I told you, my following is mostly from a year and a half ago. But even before, people seem to be intrigued with what I do. Like they, I don't know if it's like, are. I don't know if it's the energy or something, but when I go out, like people are always they're kind of like looking at me, you know, like who is this person? Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like I, I this is what I believe. Like I just I really know what I'm all about and like what I'm you know, who I am and um, and I think it gives you confidence. So like, okay, this is really like, this is, I, I, I don't, I'm not looking for a job. I'm not looking for what I'm going to do for the future. Like I really know, you know, what I'm good at. I know, I know yeah. what I'm not good at. Yeah. And so I, well, I present myself a certain way. I think that's what it is. And so people are like, they interested. I don't know. So you don't need a prong collar, right? There just happens to be one. You can take any dog without a prong collar and solve the problem if you had enough time so that the, so well, they help this is what i explain to my clients um it's not a matter of needing the prone collar i think like i show them sometimes even with the harness the dogs every after they come they i still do it with the harness on and i move the dog around and i show them but that's in a controlled environment so i feel like it, it helps a lot it you does help yeah right? oh, well, the prone collar, what I do is I try to manage the dog before they get to invest into something else. So the prone collar is designed to get the dog's attention. So that sensation of the collar on the dog's neck brings the dog's attention to you with just the sensation of the collar. That means a little bit of pressure, but it just goes like that instead of... But not like crazy corrections. No corrections at all. Actually, if a dog is like not one of those really high, you know, high strong dogs, they're like lunging crazy on the leash. You will, you won't feel like you're correcting a dog at all. You're gonna use two fingers and you're going to just move them around, but they give them direction. So they give them uh, no no time to focus on all the distractions happening around them. Yeah. So excitement or fear, all those things that they see things, they get more triggered. The prone collar keeps them more focused on you. Now, if you do that in combination with other types of training, like yeah. food training, all that, it's only gonna like then it's gonna be like a hundred percent. You know, yeah. and 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 it's it's the change. Like it's there's a rehearsal of behavior on this front clip thing, on this back thick clip thing, on this choke chain. There's a rehearsal so of badness that is so rehearsed. Well, they're trying to figure out what's going on, and that gives you a chance to teach them something new, sure. Because when you first first put a prong call on them, they're like, "Whoa, what is this?" And they just teach them how to follow directions, right? They teach them the right way. Because a lot of people they actually have a prong call on the dogs. They come to my class, and the dog is pulling and dragging. You know, on their hind legs, like yeah. just the, as if they didn't have a prone collar on. Uh, but the prone collar is right. not fit correctly. Right, it's not right, the right. right size for the dog. There was no training with the prone collar. They just slapped it on and went for a walk. Uh, the dog got too comfortable with having it on there and got comfortable putting pressure on it. And yeah. that's why we can hurt your dog.
yeah, if you use it incorrectly like that. Yeah, and I also think about during that, the, the dog daddy thumbnail that we were talking about earlier where uh, we made Cambodia. we made a thumbnail of dog daddy if you want to go back it's like six months old during during all the talking um crap go ahead eric sorry it says, it says that the fight's over but joel says essentially yeah go ahead and train the dogs like once you show us what you can do then we'll listen to you but if you don't deal with the type of dogs we deal with we it's over hear what you have to say and game's I'm, over dude. Like, well i'm like listen i'm i will listen to any trainer who has a disagreement with me you, I will listen to you. I will have you on the podcast, but you have to work with the dogs that we work with. And until you do, it's over. There is, there is no argument here. That's why I feel like we never really have an easy way out of this other than just two opinions. And then we're talking to people that need help with the type of dogs we're talking about. Yeah. Because everybody else, they give it the excuse that, oh, they don't need to agitate the dog first. That's why we oh, never see them one. being aggressive. Which is, if you have a dog that's highly reactive and aggressive at home, you know the moment your dog is even smell someone from like a mile away, they're already reactive. Not every dog is like that, but a lot of the ones that I work with, they are like that. I mean, any sound, any sight of any anyone, they're so highly reactive that this trainer wouldn't be able to get anywhere near them. What are they going to do over the phone? I see your dog. I'm here, like, you know, on the top of the, they're probably going to be on top of the building or something looking down. Like, I see you down there. Like, and that yeah. given the, the owner directions, it makes no sense. Like, I you don't... have to approach them to talk to them and, and see the dog. I know. I don't even care about that excuse because there's still a, a way to make a video for them with that dog that they say we don't have to educate the dog. Do one video from any of these trainers where they show the dog being beforehand, aggressive yeah. beforehand by the owner. I don't care. And then show and make it an hour long video if you need, if you need it a week. I don't care about it. I'll give you a week. Just show the us dogs, the video. Yeah, the dogs that they say they are aggressive that they do use for demonstration are literally those dogs that you can take the leash and put the hand in the dog's mouth. And I like, know. Like, it's like the, it's yes. like the easy no, like, dogs. The, the easy like the dogs are like they'll do dog a little daddy and I work with. Yeah. Like it's the easy dogs. They'll dog be, daddy. They'll and be like, whoop. and then oh, see this dog by barks at people, and then they those are the dogs. Me and dog daddy like we we see with the information and we go. Awesome. This is going to be an easy day. Like this dog doesn't really bite people. Right. Well, and the sad thing is that a lot of those owners, they think that dog is really dangerous because yeah, they don't yeah. understand. And then just trainers, you know, and that's the most they would even do. Even then you don't see a lot of them, those dogs anyways. They're doing dogs that they, you don't see any reaction because the dog is really it's not, not that reactive. It's not a giant problem. The dog barks at like one person here and there because of like, yeah, which know, is a something. problem. It's not good. Yeah, it's a habit, but we're talking about like dogs aggression. killing children is a real problem. Yeah. Just dogs are killing you know, other dogs is a I, I that's the problem. Right? Is, you know, you're you're you seem a bit younger than we are, right? Maybe a different stage of, of your life. But if you keep doing what you're doing, I mean, just imagine like if you're doing exactly what you're doing for 20 years, 30 years, like <laughs> you could, I mean, you might it's gonna be freaking go, giant, dude. But yeah, I mean, you're guy's gonna just kill it. Think about I always think of this as like how good I am now, right? Or but I, I look back, I go five years ago, I thought I was amazing. But I looked at what I've learned in the last five years since then. And so you just continue to grow in your, you know what I mean? So just imagine right. if you just keep putting all your effort into dogs, you're just going to be. You got to be. Do you know you what I wish? I saw I, uh, I have a new product that I'm, I'm coming up with next month. I wish I had it brought. I have it in the car. I have to show you. I have a reaction to it. Awesome. I'd love to so see that's it. Like my maybe, we can, sure. may, yeah, yeah. maybe we can pause it or at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we can bring we'll it back. We'll bring it back. Yeah, I'll show yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I see it like it. You'll be surprised with the like the name of it. And what they're encouraging people to do is to target everything that I do on a daily basis. Yeah. So any store that I go to, Bro. any hotel I ever stay, any any business, anyone that connects with me, anyone that's friends with me, they want to target all of them to affect me because now you can make your own. They want to shut. They, they want to cancel. But you. but because they can't legally or ethically do it, think about it that the fact that they have to harass. People who are literally just I dogs. people Same that are around me, like people that get involved with me in any capacity, you know, like the poor people that have the zoo, they're getting harassed left and right. All they did is post a picture that we had. A, a, my energy was so amazing with the wolves. They're complimenting. And they've, they have been there since 1970 something. They have the largest wolf sanctuary. I know. And, where I, it was, is. and I was in there with them, interacting with the wolves. And all they did is acknowledge what they experienced with me. And they're getting attacked by all these people because they they support me they have like twenty thousand followers on facebook i have seven million followers yeah. so 
they're not giving me anything other than they share their experience to their little followers and they are getting harassed by yeah, people. Some of these dogs will legit be put to sleep mm -hmm. if it wasn't for you. Yeah. So you're getting in there. So I was telling this to Joel, like, don't you think you get a bit more um, leeway because that dog could potentially be put to sleep versus well, and from it, some and it's 100% real. And that's the thing like that people don't feel like they, can't relate because they don't feel like what's going on in the room. Like that's the stories that just people that they are struggling for years. They they have like sometimes the the city even said sometimes they, the city told them if the dog does not get a cer like certification that yeah. they got trained by a trainer that work with this dog and get it under control, the dog has to be put down. There's so many scenarios. Or the owner or the neighbors, that people that follow me, that the neighbor would literally tell if you don't take your dog to dog daddy, like I am calling the police. Because I love dogs. They, lo they love dogs, they're saying. But they're scared. And your dog is out of control. So they want the dog to get the training. And of course, most people that just, they, have, they, are, they come to my class. They have never taken these dogs out to a place like, you know, out in public like this. But they have to walk the dog. So, but they, they avoid it at all costs. When they have to go into For the sure. city to come to my class, they literally, this happens almost every class. They get there. They dogs sit on the ground out. crying. The dogs in you know, both arms, they're just holding the dogs. And I have to come over and take the leash. And that's why you get to see in the video. It's yeah. because the dogs yeah. already arrived. Like that, just people are crying and they're like, they they have no hope. And mm -hmm. then when they start to see the dog move and improve, even within minutes, they see that it's possible. They were like, wow. And they can see the change in their emotions. And then they start to handle the dog and me giving them confidence that they can, once they start to understand the dog and how to communicate with them and what the dog is all about and the best tools and techniques to work with the dog they start to feel confident that they can actually understand and communicate with this animal and move forward improving the dog's behavior and one thing too is that my training you know i said in the beginning the what what happens in the beginning of my videos is not really training the, the dog yet but i do spend hours tr actually teaching the owners the safest most efficient ways that is safe and manageable for them and the and the dogs to work together but today from here i'm going to a shelter uh, to volunteer for uh, to help these dogs that basically cannot even go to foster care because this you know untouchable right yeah it's like 40 minutes from here Sweet. yeah if you guys want to come you can come yeah, where, where, i would like to in? yeah you know where it is yeah once we're done here yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's uh, 40 minutes um and they have like 400 dogs not at this place but they just mostly foster mm. system but these dogs are living in the shelter because they can't they have about six dogs that can't go anywhere so i haven't matched the dogs or seen but it'll be interesting and that's what i think people and a lot of people are going to see this i think you need to know about this dude is like right after this he's going to a place that has dogs that can't even be fostered is that right. what you said he he's not charging any money i i no it's he's not and he's doing it on his own time and he's going to go help these dogs. That's a big ass deal. Well, the thing is that I know, you know, I wish I could do free for everybody. That's the thing. Like I like, I, and I do people, if you run into me in public, I, if I have time, I, I never, I don't charge. First of all, I never charge people like that. Never. Cause that's why I have, a, I have a system if they want to get an actual training yeah, class yeah. and you know, that it's not always that I'm going to have free time when you run into me <laughs> yeah. in public. But if you do run into me and like, I'm just hanging out and, and you have a dog, yeah, like yeah. I love what I do. I love, if I can help you understand the dog better, even if it's just one person, like that's something that I really love to do. I genuinely love that. So when I can help the shelters, the reason that I do free for all shelters and I promote it, is because again they have 400 dogs if they get to see what i do with these dogs and they see the difference that's potentially 400 dogs that are currently in foster care mm -hmm. and they have saved i think that's like four thousand or five thousand you know in the last few years they were telling me um but these are dogs that now they can pass the training to all just foster people um yeah and and then you know i'd help adopt adopt all of these dogs um bro how funny is it being a dog trainer right i'll like meet someone and they go, uh, oh, you're a dog trainer? And then they go, um, yeah, I have this. It's There's no, I dare somebody to find a job that is more like, oh, you're this? Let me ask you about the, like, like it's like the whole, like, uh, what's a skin doctor called? Dermatologist. Yeah. Oh, you're a dermatologist? I got this mole. <laughs> like, here. but dog training is like 10x anything else. I, that's true. It's yeah. so crazy. As and like, I'll spend that, time, but like, sometimes I'm like, well, I got to see your dog. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, they, they'll ask them like some 
very vague question about their dog and they think it's like one answer for all I like and that's the biggest problem it's like they just again the people don't understand you know how complex yeah dog training really is so complex i'm like okay i could you could explain things for 10 minutes then i could explain things for 30 minutes but bro i'm i'm trying to buy groceries i don't know <laughs> like i got places to go You're all right yeah, not like Dog Daddy. Bro's just going around working for free all the time. <laughs> He's nicer than me, I think. Uh, all right, you have some stuff. You want me to do some? Uh, all right, so I want to give a quick update on the Maui thing. So we did a $500 donation through YouTube because of the Maui fires, obviously. And um, we wanted to donate to the uh, Maui Humane Society. So we put $500 goal, dropped the podcast yesterday, looked on it today. It was already achieved. I don't know if it's past that or not, but... I wish I, I wish I had seen it. I yeah. donated a thousand dollars to them two days ago. Oh, that's ah, amazing. Yeah. We're we I, we might throw it in this one too, just so they have the opportunity. I don't think there's any bad part about having it because it's going to the end of the month. So they can just go people, back. I mean, either way, whatever. Um, whatever. But, but as long as we can get the money to them, I thought that was super cool. Yep. So uh, it made me feel um, like you did some good in the world. Yeah. yeah. Or that you know, this this is helping in some way. So I thought that was super cool. Um, we always do an apology segment on this show. It's like a joke. Because we make we some, people off so We much. piss people off on this podcast. Really? We just go off on things. And so we have a joking apology segment. So even though you're here, we're going to still do our, okay. our joking and segment. He, can, he probably has a lot of apologies too. So well, you got anything for us on the apology front? Oh, yeah. You told me we were going to do this and I forgot because like Dog Daddy was coming in. So I thought about that. Um, Who did I make mad last week? We talked about, oh, like I think we flea medications. Yeah. No, we talked crap about them. We talked crap about Europe a lot. I don't know why. We thought you might be from Europe at first, but really? I know that you're from. Europe. I know why. And you should, you should, maybe you love Europe, but that's where a lot of the hate comes from. You no, know, I'm good to Germany, Italy. bro. I'm good to Italy. Oh, I like Italy. Italy. But like animal rights is like originally kind of from Europe. And mm. so it's still in that dog training world. The two have sort of merged in a way. I mean, I'm, I worked with exotics and so I've kind of kind of been around this world a little bit for yeah, a while, yeah. but anyway, so we just jokingly like talk, okay. talk smack about Europe, have fun in Italy. My wife loves Italy. That's the only thing he, he goes, what do you like about Europe? And I go, uh, my wife likes Italian food, <laughs> but it's, it's joking. And our Europe loves us like Germany, right? Like yeah, you have a lot of, I have cousins that live there. So yeah. And a lot of your people. Yeah. I mean, Germany is a giant YouTube audience. But yeah. we still talk crap about Germany because it's fun. Lately, I've been getting more and more people. Like, it's weird. I was, uh, the last couple of weeks, a lot of new people from Germany commenting, like, come to Germany. I don't know what it yeah. is. One of my videos, because my my audience is a huge amount of them is from the UK. Yeah. So the second after you, the US is the UK, mine Canada, too. and then Australia. I know, yeah, mine too. But Germany's fifth for me. Really? They give us five, I think, right? Like, if no, you look it, on it, there's it four. Thanks oh, more. They pay on, on YouTube, I'm, I don't remember, but like, you know, that's Facebook and yeah, yeah, and all that. yeah, yeah. So, so I you, okay, no, no crazy apologies. I don't remember our last podcast, bro. Everything. No, this no, we've, we've got to have like three in a very short period of time, <laughs> but we also do a breed of the week. So, oh. we forgot last week, so I want to do two. And so, if I get you guys both to chime in on the breed of the week, oh, basically, whatever comes to your mind about that breed, bro, you're getting put on the spot, dude. That's how Is this that okay? thing works. Yeah, yeah. he's cool. Okay, yeah, so yeah. the first one, I have two. Uh, One's a hat tip. So the first one would be Dogo Argentino. Oh, a Dogo Argentino. Haven't we done this on Breed of the Week? So here's my Breed of the Week. Here's how this works, bro. Uh, we disappoint people, or the podcast viewers all the time. Because he just gives it to me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And then I like I like say the little so bit what, about what it. What would you supposed to do? Like, whatever you comment what, on, on the breed? Whatever you think about okay. it. And uh, mine's always like super short. And people are like, that Breed of the Week sucked. And I'm like, yeah, well, you who, who cares? That's my opinion. All right. Dog Argentino. So, I mean, they're common. They're not that common. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've trained many. I did uh, two videos on them in the last six months, probably. I love them. They look like freaking missiles to me. They're just like, they like look at another dog and they're cool. They're like Connie courses in a way where they're like, I'm not going to be like some gnarly. I mean, they're gnarly, but they're, 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 they're they, they won't necessarily start it, but they'll finish it kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, but man, they'll sometimes look at like Prince or like me or like something. And they're like, you know, I will mess you up. Right. Like <laughs> Dogo, they're just kind of like, How much do they they're serious on? business. I think like what? 90 pounds. Yeah. I think that's about right. Average male. 
oh yeah he also does this and then he puts me on the spot for that and then we look it up and he tells me if i'm wrong in the yeah words. i mean i I, oh, yeah. I, from, I, right? I don't get as many of them um not as many i would say in general like I don't get a lot of even people saying they have a dog in general. Yeah. You know, it's weird. Like Rod Roller, same thing. I don't get a, a lot. Maybe yeah. like every 10 classes, I will get one. Yeah. In there. And we're talking about like 10, 20, 30 dogs, you know, like yeah. four day. Um, and I want to get like maybe one every 10 of these classes. Dog in channel is even less. I would say that was a couple of them, probably two or three like this, this year so far. Yeah. And I go to all the different cities. Yeah, so. not yeah that's not. That's but not. the ones that I have worked with, they have never been difficult yeah like they have never been like the cane courses i get a lot of them they're very fearful so when they're reactive they're fearful yeah um or they yes. are like aggressive but they're more like defensive and yeah still very i agree timid. the cane uh the dog was that i have worked with um a little reactivity here and there but like m m way more stable yeah and again i haven't worked with that many but the ones that i have worked with yeah 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 i mean listen they're they're not they're powerful dogs they're powerful, but dude. i feel like you know, I I think from my from what I have seen, I have worked with way more cane courses. I would think they're easier than cane. There's courses. a lot of them, but yeah, a lot All of right. cane courses. I'm going to give you one more since we skipped on it last week. So uh, the next one, hat tip, dog daddy, German Shepherd. What do you think, guys? How about let's start with dog daddy on the German Shepherd. What can you well, say? This, about if, if anyone's a freaking expert on German Shepherds, yeah. it's this guy. I mean, so German Shepherds. I think um, the biggest thing with them is that they are very sensitive and shy dogs in general so without the proper handling they can be very loud about whatever they're doing so like the anxiety they're prone to anxiety being reactive react reactive to different things but they're also very sensitive so if you do know what you're doing they're pretty easy dogs to work with other than they do have a lot of energy and they want to be involved in what you're doing so they're more like you know the type of dog that's kind of like they want to be with you all the time and be involved with everything that you're doing and everything yes. that's happening around them yes. so they're going to have a lot of excitement anxiety reactivity to things um but if you know what you're, what you're doing they're really fun dogs they're also like the most versatile breed of dog so pretty much anything that you would want to do if you get the right dog of that breed and you raise it properly it can live on a farm it can live in an apartment it can live in a house it can live with small children um i feel like for the most part um because they're like kind of reactive they have a high chance of biting people but the bites are usually not they're not like safe for your attacks for the most part uh, they they are not they're kind of soft dogs. I, I, if you watch my videos, a lot of the German Shepherds like they they do the best uh, for turn around like in a single training class, from biting people crazy, high, highly reactive to happy go lucky, passing by people and understanding. They are also very handler sensitive, so they want their bread to work for someone. Yeah, you know. So once you do get them under control, they adapt really quickly to having someone giving them directions, uh, and they're really smart, so they learn pretty quickly. Mm. So some dogs are more independent. If they, they got to be as aggressive as a German Shepherd, they may be a lot, a lot more complex to work with and yeah. and actually, you know, completely rehabilitate them. Bro, that was very good breed of the week from Dog Daddy. I know. You that know. was a good one, bro. Do you have anything to add? No, he is a German Shepherd. He just he just freaking killed the German Shepherd. I hope he would. Well, there's also one thing: German Shepherds are like they're almost the most popular breed of dog. Yeah, like in the country, there. like yeah, yeah. you know, and so, but there's so many different bloodlines and types of German Shepherds. I, I mean, because I'm so yeah, familiar with them, I also know there's like so many different types and then mixes of them, uh, different bloodlines of them yeah. that that it makes them very different. Like different people colors. See my dogs, and they're like, I want a German Shepherd because they see my dogs, and they can get one from a, a specific breeder that's going to be a completely different dog. Totally, you know. And so understanding like that is also important if you're getting totally. one. I, I, I don't like a lot of energy in dogs. Just because, I mean, my dogs are not couch, pota couch potatoes. They should pretty yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, you're not doing agility. Right. Well, and, you know, again, I'm, I like to be responsible. I wouldn't want to have something that, like, if I had a dog that's really, like, a Belgian Malinois, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I'm doing and yeah. having this dog. Like, my dogs go to hotels with me. Not that they, yeah. Belgian Malinois can't do, but I have seven sure. dogs. I like to have a pack of dogs. And I like, yeah, and I like to, and I like to bring them along to a lot of things that I, I do. Know. You don't see Good. people doing that with no. the Belgian Malinois because... Well, they you don't would, see anyone doing that in general, but you know, I, I I would be able to do it, but it would be a lot of managing oh, yeah. that. It's just I don't need. Joe, that. you don't need more stress. It's probably yeah. a bit more recognizable with seven dogs while you're walking around. Oh yeah, it's funny. It's like, crazy. It, it dabbles because a lot of people know my dogs, but they don't know me or vice versa. Yeah, me too. But when we combine both, and especially with the the oh, pack, yeah. like yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, okay. I have a question. 
about German Shepherds. So I have a percentage in my head that I've thought this for a long time. And I, I want to see if you have the same percentage. What percent of female German Shepherds are have neurotic kind of, I, I, I guess, neurotic behaviors, would you say? So because they said that, I, I would think you're thinking a lot. But for me, I, I have mostly female dogs. Always have, oh. like, I have had more, mo mostly always, you know, a whole pack of shepherds. female German Shepherd with, oh. like, maybe one or two males. Even when I had, like, 20 dogs before. Forget like, yours for a second. In the world. Yeah. In I, I what think do you think? The males are more difficult. You do? Yeah. I think the females, man, there's, like, I would say 10%. I would say 10% of female German Shepherds are just, like, they come out to my facility and they're just, like, their eyes and they're just like cruising. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm just like, bro, like you mm. got to chill. I it? think, well, mm. I can see that, but I feel like they're also more responsive. Mm. So maybe they are the more, pro like they're more problematic uh, without the training, but, but I feel like they fall into the order quickly. Um, maybe, I don't know if it's just with my approach. I don't know, but I, yeah. sometimes I will have males that I, I yeah, like, I, I can only think of one female German Shepherd that was a little bit of a challenge out of all these years of training, and she was trained as a police dog. Um, but in general, German Shepherds, again, they are not that difficult for me at all. And there has been one male that was like nine years old that was a police dog, retired, that was abused, and you know, and he, and he would not give up. Like, and it, he was like almost weak, but then physically, so to the point that he would like fall down the ground. Like when he would jump on me, he would fall down, but he'd still be angry and tense. So yeah. what do you do with a dog like that? You know, it's like you can work with them, but you have to work really around the problem. You know like, what? Go ahead. Sorry. Well, so my method too is like a lot of times people, when they see my videos, they think I'm just going to dominate a dog and get them to behave. And it's really not that at all. A lot of the dogs that I work with, once they feel someone else is in control, they start to follow directions. The moment that I feel like a dog will actually hurt themselves instead of surrendering like that, my approach changes immediately. We're, yeah. And there's dogs that there. physically can't handle. Yeah. Or they're so angry and aggressive that like they will hurt themselves, overheat, choke before yeah, they it. actually stop. So that means I, eat, I, I switch my approach. Yeah, we got it. We got but it. But rarely with German Shepherds that they would do that. You know what's funny about that is like, like the, he's got, you've got seven German Shepherds. That's a lot. You've had them over, of, of my guess, a few years ago and more. You've trained a ton. Like he's like, I've never really had a problem with German Shepherds. He's probably trained hundreds it, hundreds and hundreds, like thousands. Yeah, German Shepherds is a lot. And then, the, like the Doberman for me, who I've had obviously two in the last, you know, 15, 17 years, um, I just don't have that many problems with them. But it's, it's, it's crazy, like, because they're not that different. Like, breeds are different, but they're not like a whole different, it's not like a cat compared to a dog. He's like, I don't have problems with German Shepherds. I'm like, I don't have a problem with Dobermans. I, like, I honestly, Dobermans have been pretty easy for me too. Yeah, you know, Dobermans I did a video one time with this blonde girl who had a, a dog that was actually friendly, but she was really aggressive with the dog. It went vital. It was like a long video, actually. And I got a lot of people, like in LA, a lot of Do Doberman owners. Uh, so I, at one point, like they like they took the majority of my classes, like all Doberman, Doberman people. But I never really had problems with, like I, I think some of them being very sensitive, I would say. Like some of the Dobermans being very sensitive and um, and stubborn, stubborn in the sense of like they, if they're really afraid of you, like they don't want you to, to put a call on them they're really kind of snappy but yeah uh, compared to all the dogs that i work with like they would not be classified as like the most difficult i would say hmm, that's actually a good question that i'm almost asking myself and i it's can't like really game think bread pitbulls pitbulls like um, game like like oh, different level oh yeah the pits, ones that like the ones with a really high prey drive yeah it's 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 honestly rough. people aggressive ones i would say there's only been like a few that were like maybe literally three that like the approach that I would use would take a lot more for them to see like relevant results. Like they would get the dog more under control, but the dog is still really angry. That's what I'm saying. But that's towards people. Towards other dogs, definitely more common where they're like very yeah. worked up. And in a group setting, I wouldn't say like it was ideal. But again, my group training, that's one thing, one thing too. I don't promote it as like, you're going to bring a dog to my group training and you're going to never need training again. Yeah. So even if you bring a dog that doesn't really actually benefit as much from the group training, if you come with an idea that you're coming that you learn what yeah. to do about dog training, you're going to learn what you need to do when you go home with that dog. Um, but the majority of the dogs that come, they do leave with like, you know, such a, like a difference um, that 
people almost assume that everybody can just come to my group training and they're never going to need training again. Yeah. yeah. And That's I kind of did it to myself. It's, I, don't, yeah. I don't try to promote that or, or do that, but because I, I do go above and beyond to give them like as much as they can get. Like I'm only here for, I'm in San Diego. So I just got here yeah, this morning and I'm going to leave tomorrow night. And my, I have two classes here tomorrow, but it, you know, it will be at least a few months before I would ever come back here. So out of G's, I have about 30 dogs coming tomorrow throughout the day. There's two different classes whatever they get is what they're going to get for a few months at least from me and then if i feel like the dog really needs more so then we have to go to another trainer i simply will not be around so i've really tried to push as much like information and knowledge yeah You're and like so a rap star kind of like you know what i mean like two what dogs. do you mean You're just like i'm sorry lady i gotta fly out i gotta go to the yeah well it's kind of weird know? too because like i uh, just anyone, any any job that you're doing, like if, you know, if you're smart, you want to like you want to give a do a good job. You want to yeah. leave a good impression. So because I know I'm only gonna be there for the day, if I just tell them like, oh, we we'll do this today, and the next time we'll work on more, they are gonna go home exactly the same way they came in, you know, because yeah. the training is something that you need yeah. regularly. So I have to like I do three hours of teaching ten families like everything they need to do, and then I that class ends another th three hours with another ten family. Yeah. And plus the spectators. Yeah, you and you do the best you can um, in a class environment. It's kind of to ensure that they, you know, at the end of the day, I want them to improve. I want the dog totally. to be safe. So. And that was my point about the magician thing is like people will see my videos or see your videos or see your class. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to go to dog daddy's class and like my dog's going to be fixed. No, I mean, they might if he pull, takes your dog out and things work well, like your dog might be 80% better, might be 100% better. Let's hope. But. It's a, it's, it's not that we're not, we we're can't not fix dog, every right? single dog yeah. in an hour. It's really interesting because a lot of dogs actually, all they need is a change of handling and they become better. Yeah. So you see a lot of that for sure. But the dogs that actually need a lot of work and repetition, if the owner doesn't come with that mind of like, I need to learn what I need to do so I can be a better owner. You know, it doesn't matter what anyone, what any method someone would show um, to them, like it, it just won't. It won't stick. Uh, yeah. And there are so many things that that dog's going to go home and do, or that owner's going to do and not do for their dog. And I'm like, listen, maybe it's exercises like this vital missing piece. And they're like super overweight or so. And I'm like, okay, then we got to figure out how they're going to get. But like without that piece, like some things or the dog's launching itself at you when you come home, like we have to get that under control. Then everything else is going to fall away a little bit. And if they can't do that or they don't do that, even though I say, listen, this is the most important thing. And that's what I do a lot with clients too, is like, I go, you have this one thing, you have to do it. And they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, look me in the eye. Like, you have to understand this because without this, like nothing works. I do that too. And I think a lot of times, like, because that's that never really showcased in my videos, just because it's mostly short videos. And I definitely want to start making some longer videos too. But I do the, exactly the same thing, like in my class. And sometimes people will be shocked because I'm like, but I'm calm about it because I know there's some trainers that they like, they think they're above everybody. So they're like, you are the problem, your dog, you do this for your dog. That wow. doesn't help anybody. How funny is that? People do that. But I, they, yes, yeah, they want to like throw the problem on the owner to make the owner feel guilty. And I that's know. Never mind. It's their out. I don't, I, my class is judgment free. No one is that to judge totally. anybody. They're coming that you, everybody's that you learn. But I will, I do have to emphasize like, no, if you don't change, like I, I told you what to do, I give you the dog back. You're still handling the dog the wrong way if you don't change that i just want you to understand like the dog is not going to get better so let's practice again and then like then yeah. they go into you know because they do have to realize that they have to kind of change so many things about them how they hold the leash the energy how they talk to the dog you know just get, how they give the dog directions if they don't do that it's not going to get better it's not gonna work. So. and we are not being um um uh whatever the word is condescending to our clients to say, you listen, you have to do this one thing. Like I get why they're not doing it. Right. Like training dogs it's is like, not easy for a normal I, person. I, right. And I like to always use the example of like, if I, I'm really bad with like painting or drawing. So I, it's like, if, if, if I had to do that, that's how bad I would be at it. If I'm starting exactly. for the first time. So it's just like, it's not, it's like art. So I told them it's like art. It, it's something that you are learning something new. Just like if I was to learn many other things that I'm not good at, so, yeah, you know, that's the true. only thing. So you have to just practice and practice and get better. Totally. And I say this to clients. I've said it over, you know, I go through these phases where I say certain things in a different way over a year or whatever. I, I'm supposed to take vitamin B, like my genetics. There's like a thing. And the no, you just <laughs> people, certain people need to take vitamin B and it like really helps me. And if my doctor goes, hey, man, you should take vitamin B. It's good for you. And then moves on. 
I might take vitamin B. I might not. If my doctor goes, listen, dude, like this is a big ass deal. You have to do this. Here's why. Then I will do it. And so me as a dog trainer, I go, listen, you got to do this or you don't under even understand how big of a deal this you're paying me money to be here. Like you have to get this. Yeah. And I also, I take over the leash again and I show them, see like with the dog is fine. When I take the leash and I walk around is because I'm doing all of just things like differently than what you're doing. So you have to practice. And but I, then I put them hands on to practice. Yeah. I think they're also, because I just, so I put, I give so much information and make things so clear to the clients, you know, like no one can go and train a dog in a single training session. And I, I don't claim that ever, but at the end of the day, it gives them even less room to be able to say something didn't work or method doesn't work. I tell my clients, whatever method you choose to use, you have to believe in it because it's going to take time and work. So it doesn't matter what you, what training you listen to, what you do, you have to believe in it. So I just, all I can do is show you how I do it, show you that it does work, show you as much evidence as possible that it is a method that works. And then you have to believe in what I'm showing you and doing because otherwise you're going to try for a couple of days and you're going to give up and, it, and then you're going to try the next thing. And the next thing, Two years down the road, you feel like nothing worked because whatever you direction. Of course, you want to pick something that actually is effective. That's yeah. why you have to research and find something that you know we know proven that it does work. With like you have seen it for yourself, but once it, once you find that, is you have to believe that like you have to learn to do that whatever whatever yeah. it takes because that's the only thing that will help. Yeah, mm. yeah. Eric, I know you have some more questions, some more so comments. I'm well, deal game, whatever you want to call it, to the podcast here. Oh. Like a, it's like a lightning round, right? You ever see this like word association thing where I say like a, a name or a sentence and then you just say like the first word that comes to your mind. You guys get that? Yeah. So just like you just shout it out. Yeah. Right? It could be silly, it could be funny, whatever. We'll do a little bit of doggish stuff and then I'll just roll into some more life stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I'm ready. Gotta be, uh, yeah. No cheating. No cheating, Joel. I don't know what you're up to over there. So yeah. So I'll start. Uh, and then we'll go. Uh, yeah, we'll go in. Um, hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> we will go. Joel and Dog Daddy. Then we'll go, we'll just then I'll give another question. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Ready? So the first one. So one word. Oh. Okay, two, one. Yeah. Caesar Milan. Legend. So then I have to say something. Yeah. I don't have a, I don't know. I don't have any comments. No, no comment. comment. Well, no comment. You know, honestly, like I, I wouldn't be able to say like what the first thing that comes up to mind because pe people, the reason that I heard about him is because people would say, are you related to Cesar Milan? Do you know him? And I never do because no, I grew up in Brazil. I do not have TV. I do not have internet. So I really didn't know so who he was. Here, here's why out. you should know Cesar Milan. Bro. I do know. Obviously, no, no. But, but here's why you should know a little more about him mm -hmm. because he went through what you're going through. Yeah. And that's where I think you should know kind of what worked and what didn't work. Right. Uh, that's what I think. Yeah. No, definitely. And I do. You know? I know. Um, 100%. I'm they going. Tried to destroy him. They tried to destroy him. Yeah. And in a way, it worked. And in a way, it didn't work. And I think there's lessons to be learned from that. I'm going through it to a way lesser degree, I believe, than you're going through it. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, he, I, I just think it's important, you yeah, know, definitely. for you. I, I, I want your life to be a really, I want you to have everything you want in life and like not have the stress of this, of a lot of this stuff. And I know you're happy, but like he went through a lot. Yeah. Well, the whole thing, you know, like I said, I think um, one thing that I can, I guess I could take from it is that I think he wasn't, a, it, he was like the first person. So there was like so much, you know, more like that. He, like we have th things that we have like backup now. There's people that understand like, there's more like there's just more uh for us to might be better yeah. for us it's easier is what us. you're saying easier it's easier for us it for might sure. be they also came up with a game plan and they're going to go back to that game plan mm -hmm. do, do you know what i'm saying yeah like they realized okay if we do this if we do this if we do this then and we got to be careful I think that. not that they came up with that game plan that's a tried and true game plan but i just you know so that's why like i, actually, I like season one. i have offers for like tv shows and i have had from the beginning but it, you know I wasn't ready. Now there's like more serious, serious offers, but that's part of me that kind of, um, they, uh, there has been times where with certain producers for me to accept the show, um, I would have to agree to certain things 
that would not be showcased. That means I would have to silence anything that I believe in that is actually more effective to make it where people agree with it more. And I refuse that. Yeah, you be know? careful. Yeah. And so even like now that I have offers again, that they're not necessarily saying that, but it's something that I'm really afraid of because I, when there's money involved, I don't want to be like, you know, you can't actually educate people on what's the most effective. You know that the new dog, the last one on on Netflix. Yeah, for I saw example, that. what is I forgot the name of it. Yeah, but the guy doesn't show really what he does for training. Yeah, and it's not. I'm not saying not I, I'm not a part of the production. I, I don't know what happened there, but most likely it's the production team that didn't want to use certain tools. So they didn't show that's that exactly they use right. phone collar. So the dog goes away and then comes back behaving. So that's misleading to people because now they think he doesn't use, but in reality he does. And it's because it's effective. So if, if I had to go there and do that, I would be look like I'm hiding something Yeah. or it would be misleading new people that think that they don't need, you know, certain approach to actually work with just more aggressive dogs. So. I did a video early in YouTube uh, three years ago. I did a video on that show and um i i said some things like that like the product you know when you yeah. get producers involved and i can't really stuff. blame the yeah the trainer because again i don't know i think he's a good trainer but well as far as not showcasing it really what you're doing you know because yeah. when i feel like when you don't that's why i'm so transparent like people cannot come to my class and say i didn't know you use that too i didn't know you do yeah. that it's all that literally everything that i do that anyone have ever seen any results it can be done in front of the public or on a camera like nothing, I never take a dog in a back room and then bring it back. Yeah. It's like now the dog is behaving. Yeah. So th th you can see what I'm using. Yeah. I think when you hide that, it gives people, you know, like that fake illusion that it's that easy to train the dog. All he did is spin the dog around, take it away and bring it back. And the dog is like completely different. And also how many weeks and months did it take? Yeah. You know? And edits within the video is like, we all, my all my videos are done in one single training class. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Think, it's a, I think it's important that, I mean, I, I always wonder, like, because this is a different time, right? With YouTube and all that stuff that goes on, sponsorships and things. But, like, I always think, like, you guys don't even need anybody else. Right? So let me tell you. So, like, so they were able to cancel his second season, mm -hmm. like this Netflix show. And the thing is, you know. They did. They did. They, did. they, they had an online, online they had they an online to have another. So the thing about having, you know, the one nice thing about having, uh, like you're doing your own thing. Like I do my own with social media. Yeah. The the biggest thing with it is like, there's almost like a, like a cocky thing about it because it's, I, I'm doing it on my own. I can yeah. say and do whatever I want. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't have to answer to someone else. You I know. know what I mean? Eric talked to me. He's like, Oh, what if you know TV shit comes and we're just like, yeah, we're probably not doing it. Like, like over, it's nice that overnight you let someone else kind of like you're giving it into some putting in someone else's hand to create something for you, and there's so much more publicity that you get and and business opportunities and you know. It's nice to be asked too. Yeah, but at the same time, you like you're definitely tied up with someone else. Like you're no longer you know really. Yeah. You're it's not a, independent anymore. Right. Or any interview that you do like something like this, they have to agree to it first. It's a big yeah. decision. Yeah, for you because I mean, they're losing money if you say something wrong you know they're gonna be on, they're gonna be on you and they, like, and they will cancel you you know what i mean like if they right. get pressure because if they're run by nbc cbs all this stuff they will if they get pressure they will buckle because they they do it all these major networks do this all the time now this is how i look at it so out of the regularly i got about 200 million views mm -hmm. between all my platforms but imagine if i dedicated to create yeah, yeah. my own series on youtube Way That'll less. be like a TV show, but like my own. And then it's, I own everything and I know exactly what yeah. I can put out, but you know? Slow you down. You know well, I mean? but I mean, like if I, if I was to put all the information and create my own show so that I'm able to educate people on what I do to make it kind of like a reality style, but not just the short videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's an interesting, interesting thought. Just basically do your own. Because if show, I'm getting that many views, I don't really need a TV show. And then it's like that's podcasts now. And that's I can do different interview shows. I can do my own. If I've got like 10 million followers, you know, they want to interview me anyway. So the only thing I won't have is like the actual show, but I can do it on on YouTube and Snapchat and Yeah, you don't you don't need it. And, and I was telling Joel this the other day that, you know, I like go in and, and like, you know, visit my mom and, and she's got youtube up on her tv and she's watching youtube and then and most like people that, know, yeah. same thing he's 71 he's a walk i guarantee you walk in the door he's got youtube on his tv and he's watching yeah. youtube so it's like this old days of like we're gonna all sit down and watch the commercials and all the like more like the whatever um caesar's show was called i forgot um, yeah i don't know whatever it was called but it, it's like the, the times have changed and i just think the ability to be um uh, and I, think I would rather personally make less money and be able to be who i am you know, and I know that's how Joel is, then to 
have to answer to people. Like you didn't go into business to answer to people. Nope. You know? All right. Word association. Oh, okay. Sorry. So we got, it usually goes a bit faster than that, but Hey, if you don't know, you could just say pass. So, um, all right. That was a good segue though. I like that. So next one's pitbulls. Pitbulls, bro. You're like putting us on the spot here. This is the idea. Pitbulls. Um, they're, um, you want to put Dog Daddy on spot? He's I like, can answer that one. Well, I've given him a little bit of time. That one I can answer good. Oh, will you answer yeah. Answer. First thing that comes to mind, intense. Oh. Intensity. Yeah. Nice. Now, when I say intense, does oh, it can go answer. It can go different ways. Like, I feel like they're very eager, intense dogs. So just like any other dog, they can be friendly. They can be friendly. Any dog can be aggressive. They can be aggressive. But whatever way they're going to be, they're going to be very intense about it. So if you have really friendly people, they're like really eager and they're licking Great you answer. and, you know, going hugging you it's like that ham you know but then they join aggressive they are going to put just as much effort into fighting and killing you know and doing whatever they're determined to they're really loving determined dog. all of it that's why that's... people love them huh it's because they're just like all the way they're and then you and the then way. you get two different opinions it's like the people that have the friendly pit bull that's like the best dog they ever had and the people who got the wrong side of the pit bull because it could have been any other dog but if I, again i told you a german shepherd but if a german shepherd goes and attacks you i can guarantee you it's going to be less severe than if a pit bull attacked you yeah you know and so that's yeah. why they that's the reason why they get a bad name because it's it gets more attention. It, it literally just tears someone apart. Like they mold someone, you know, um, and, and they have that much power. They're very, they're mentally and physically strong dogs yeah, and, and everything about them is power. So, yep. Bro, I did this pit bull with Prince. My dog was like running and he's like pinning these pit bulls because they're out of control. And he's like, you need to calm your ass down. And like, I go with these guys and they like run and like just run into stuff and not even be hurt. And I'm like, they can basically these two or i'm like they don't hardly feel my pain people are like in the comments and people are like, they shouldn't say that i'm like okay i know everything can feel pain i'm saying it's different have very, it's very freaking high different tolerance. yeah yeah and it's, it's a fact it's in true. the industry you're saying this like people should listen to what you guys say and not what some jackass uh, in the comments not 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 two of them. the well best. i think it's not too bad yeah it, it doesn't help when when you don't acknowledge that because like if you if you're saying so are very intense and powerful dogs and they, if they're aggressive, they're going to be that just as powerful and intense. If they're friendly because they were raised properly, they have the right genetics, you're going to see the good side of them. But understanding that is really important because if you, if you have a pit when you're saying they're just nanny dogs and they're great, and then someone else just gets one because of that and they don't pick the right dog, they don't train and socialize them, they're going to have the one that's killing the neighbor the next month, the next year. You know, yeah. so I think understanding that because if you do get it, you know what they can turn out to be because they're so intense. You're right, and so you do the everything right to prevent the truth. It. The truth matters, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, that, so that, give, I like his answer. Give Dog Daddy a point for that because like I, the, didn't, I didn't know this was a competition, bro. <laughs> Co okay, I, I'm gonna say intense too. Okay, that's okay can I do that? So now you should just anyone just shout it out. So next one, uh, and you can't be biased on this one. Most loyal breed. Most loyal breed. Hmm. We can't be biased. Well, you, you, you can. Well, if you he thinks it's German there. Shepherd, he a uh, German Shepherd <laughs> loyal. I, I, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say uh, Connie Corso. That's what I'm going to say. The ones I've dealt with are like, they're 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 coming to me for a reason. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're like, no, no, no. I just you're taking me. Like I just want to be with my dad and like tell this dog to get out of here and tell. And like all of them are just like, no, no, no. I just want to be with those people back there. Yeah. F forget everything else. And so that's, I have to come up with an answer quick, dude. You don't even give me any time to. I, I, I don't think I would pick one breed. I think there's just like, you know, there's so many breeds that are just as loyal. Yeah. Like, so it'd be hard to like point out one because it'd be picking one of like, oh, but this other breed. I like to be fair. I think like there's some breeds that are definitely more loyal than others. Like they're more committed to the owners. They're bred yeah. to be, you know, working with the owner and, yeah. and that. But I think there's so many of them. We'll put you down with German Shepherd. Okay. <laughs> um, how about most fearful breed? Fearful it's, breed. It's generalization, but uh, when you think of a dog. What one pops in? A your fearful head? What's dog. What's that? What's that breed? breed? I. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, a weird hound, question. but a smaller one. The oh, the whippet. The whippet. <laughs> that's a good answer. That is a good well, answer. The, the whippet, and then there's the another one that is similar. Um, it's a really rare breed. Ig. But they have Italian the long greyhound. Oh, no, um, they have the long hair. They kind of like the same body of the greyhound. Mm -hmm. They're the same family. Yeah, we. we were I only met a couple, but they they were like. Never aggressive, but shut down. Like really afraid. The ones that were afraid. Yeah, I'm trying to think what. Uh, bro, Whippet's a good answer. This guy's good at this game. He's freaking good. Uh, I uh, um 
um the most fearful breed um i'm gonna put Bo a Bozoi? like a cavalier Bozoi? yeah Bozoi. yeah there's boys that's a sight cavalier? cavalier king charles spaniel afraid fearful they're like these little wimpy dogs and like they'll like meet my dog and they're like 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 uh, uh, uh. i know they have the most heart problems they have heart? like heart. Oh, yeah, they've had like weak heart. Yeah, they. Yeah, you gotta be careful. They're like so soft. They're soft, very sensitive. Though, soft is different than soft, yeah. fearful. Um, but I'm answering it and I'm sticking to it. Podcast, mm -hmm. I see the, the comments though, so we gotta be careful about that. Um, how, what about first thing that comes to mind with Siberian Huskies? Um, uh, independent. independent. Oh, <laughs> bro, bro, that Great. was magic. That was that kind was of magic. magic. <laughs> that was so cool. You guys both thought the same at thing. the exact same time uh, but they honestly believe it or not you like they are smarter and eager to learn more eager to learn than people actually think oh. yeah i mean yeah, they, I they're you. super distracted with things outside but they they have they pick up on tricks like commands obedience really quick which is... bro how funny is it the reaction that that other dogs have to siberian huskies they're like they hate them. Yeah, they, they don't hate they, them. They, they like have, see them far away, and they're like, "I'm gonna bark and like people they just call have me that dominant approach." Yeah, and I think it's because they look a lot like wolves. Right. Also, I think other dogs are just like. Well, I think also, do you know what? Like the pointy ear, the curly tail, yeah, and they facing like you know, you know when a dog is trying to appear bigger, and they try, they have that the the huskies like they have that naturally, that inst yeah. instance like yeah, they're stance. They wow. are okay. So I will not do. We're gonna get into the more of the life stuff. I'm not gonna do. Just, worst YouTuber, so we'll just go to the next. Yeah, one. we don't want worst um, YouTuber. That's <laughs> we're we're positive people here. We are okay, ready so to. I'm gonna catch you guys off guard here. So, favorite movie? The Departed. Spirit. Which one? Spirit. It's like a. Ooh. It's like a wild horse movie. Spirit. Yeah. All right. Just called Spirit. An American like, movie. I think so. All right. It's not like yeah. a Brazilian movie. It's it has like a, this wild horse that, it, but it was like very independent. No one could tame it, yeah. and he kind of tries to save the whole herd when people like you know the they're trying to capture the herd, and yeah, it's really interesting. Spirit, I'll put that on the uh, put that on the list. I said The Departed. I'm, I'm in true uh, mafia style. Yeah, I like a mafia movie. <laughs> Big mafia guy. Um, favorite TV series. Dog Daddy. I don't watch TV. Okay, he doesn't watch TV. I'm gonna say. The Sopranos. Oh yeah. Okay. I should have known that. Yep. That there. Okay. I think I'll get one that um, dog daddy will answer here. Favorite car. Oh. He can answer. I'm not a car guy. Oh, oh, I knew it, dude. He's gonna get it. I bet he's gonna get a. I'm gonna get a pink one. Yeah, I, bet. I legit was like, I guarantee he says Lamborghini. <laughs> the Hurricane. Lambo. Nice. The Hurricane. You should get one, dude. I have a Corvette now, but. It's like, yeah. The, Corvettes are fast. The, yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, man. He should get my kids. They're on YouTube a lot, right? They're kids. And they're like, what? You should get a Lambo, dad. And I'm like, you know how freaking silly I would look in a Lamborghini? Like 48-year-old dad of three. I'm like, well, I'm not getting a Lamborghini. Oh, it works with him. It doesn't work with me. Um, okay. Uh, did, you, did you answer? Oh, no. Sirocco? It's called a Scirocco, bro, sure. and that's old school. Um, I'm um, I don't not know. Not a Subaru. Not a Subaru. <laughs> Definitely not a Subaru. I don't know. I want to. I have three kids. I want like a. I want like a badass big vehicle, I like a Land Rover. Land Rover. Okay, that's a good. Answer. Yeah. How, how about favorite book? The, the Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. Change wow. Change my life. I should read that. I have it in here. I've never. Yeah, it's a great book. I don't read. Read. <laughs> no TV, no reading for Dog Daddy. Favorite, he just likes to read the comments section. He does, yeah, he I don't like to read the comments, to be honest. I don't, like, I don't like reading. Don't read the bottom. <laughs> all the hate um, okay. Well, I think we can get another answer here. Uh, favorite food? Probably San Diego Mexican food. Probably. Yeah. Um, steak. Steak? That is a true Brazilian right oh, there. Brazilian like steak. Bro, that's, that's oh, what yeah. he's talking about. Yeah, I think so. My friend, he goes to Brazil a fair amount, and he's like, Brazil has the best food because you're, yeah. like, you're like, it's you like got... real food. I actually call it yeah. like real food, it comes from the ground, mm. like yeah. it's like rice, beans, vegetables, salads, yeah. and meats. And meats, have you, yeah, have you ever heard of this place called like Fogo de Chão? Have you heard of Fogo de Chão, my favorite place, yeah. Where is it? It's like my, it's my favorite, like, 
regular go to restaurant. Is it a chain or is it only in San It's a chain. No, they're everywhere. Oh, oh really? They're everywhere. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's an all you can eat buffet and meat, ro meat rodizio. So you said that you put the green card up and then they just keep bringing all these different cards. Unlimited meat. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go I've there. Never been. We should all go. Yeah. Um, there's another place. What is it called? Ray de Gato or something like that? It's a, it's another Brazilian. Yeah, they Brazilian have a few Brazilian. really similar ones. It's all the same style. Mm -hmm. uh, Fogo de Chão, I believe, is the original one. But they are like all the major cities. Okay, okay. I think that one downtown, but that would be... I've always wanted to go. I've never went. So I'm a big animal guy, like exotics. It's kind of my thing. It was my thing my whole life up until I got into dog training. Were you... Did you live in Brazil like near any cool animals? So I lived on the top of the mountains in the middle of nowhere. Um, we had all kinds of different wild animals. Um, like, let's see. Some of them, are, they're like, they, I don't even know the name of them in English, yeah. but there were some wild cats, like mm. uh, definitely bobcats, uh, pork pines. We had mountain the lions? Mount, mountain lions. Uh, they would actually come in like, you know, sometimes the dogs would be hurt, but then because they would go hunting and the dogs would run free. All just farmers that lived there, they actually like descendants from um, Germany. Yeah. And so they, it's a very mm. cool place. Like they, they're so isolated in this part of Brazil that they speak a uh, dialect, like a mix of German and Portuguese that only they know. Yeah. Wow. And, but anyway, so they, it's a, they didn't, wouldn't that be you? No, I, I wasn't, I was born here. So you I say they, because my grandparents bought this farm and then you like, and visit, I, but my grandparents are not from there either. They're from the city. Oh, yeah. So they lived there. So we kind of were only a few people like from the city that would live there. The rest were born and raised many generations. And so they have their own cultures. Like the way that they cook bread is like through the a mud yeah. oven that they made outside that doesn't require electricity or gas or anything. They cook their bread. Uh, they, they don't drive. It's like really crazy. It's it's Chile is, it's a lot of yeah. But it's like Brazil is not really known for that. It's like certain parts, but we just happen to live there. And but we had snakes, snakes, lots of snakes. And snakes. Um, what is those animals that I don't know in English what they're called, but they're called tattoo in uh, in Portuguese. But they kind of live on the ground. They like uh, they kind of have small? a shell. They have a shell. Like armadillo, maybe. I think it's an armadillo. I have to, look, I have to see, but they, they eat or a hedgehog. Hmm. They they're kind of similar to a pork pine, but without the hedgehog. Yeah. So we had a lot of those. Those are really popular. And then they have another one that's like a capybara. Oh yeah. Yeah. So a lot of those. They, those are like the main ones that they would hunt. Do mm. they hunt deer? I just like the animals that like. Not in this area animals. where I lived, you would see very little of them. Yeah, not, right. yeah, not many. Uh, what state in Brazil? It's called uh, Espírito Santo. Most people don't even know. It's like oh. a small. It's going to be kind of like a what? What state would you not think of in the U.S.? Idaho. Idaho. I would be. I, I would say like kind of like a South Carolina, okay. but more city than country. What's the largest city that's close to it? Like that, that people would know. Vitoria. Okay. I'll, the only ones I know about is like Sao Paulo. Yeah, those are like Paulo, seven hour Rio driving. Janeiro. Yeah. Sao Paulo is up higher, right? Like that, more north than. It's giant. I don't know. Sao Paulo. So, see, the is thing with so me big. is that I grew up in Brazil, but I was on this farm in the middle of nowhere. So there was no internet, no nothing. Awesome. I would just go to school. My journey to school was a crazy thing. Like I would have to milk the cows and the goats in the morning. Mm -hmm. Because I would take care of all the farm animals that we collected. Because my That's grandparents are not from the farm. They they bought it to retire. And there I was, and I would talk to the neighbors. And I, this is how I started with my own dogs and my own chickens mm -hmm. and all that. But I would have to take care of all the animals. And then I had to walk about 45 minutes through a trail on top of the mountains with a, yeah. a few friends to wait for the van. Because the van couldn't drive all the way down because the road was so bad. It's all dirt road. And then they have to drive another hour to get to school. And then if it rained... He couldn't drive, so he had to stop and walk. Because there's, there's no phone to call anyone. There's no lights. Yeah. It's just in the middle of the... the wow. Middle. It reminds me of being in Sonora, Mexico. Because it's like, there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing anywhere. But the and it's the, there. for them, that's just the normal. And it's really crazy to be able to like have experienced that. Because I don't see anything like that here. So people would never be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, the fact that you, you're you coming back home and you... And then the van just breaks down. You can yeah. just call for help, call trip away, or call. Yeah. You have to get out and start to walk. And they take like three hours, four hours not to get home. So I get home at like at midnight. From five o'clock at PM until getting home like at midnight sometimes because we walked all the way from school to go home. Yeah. And you can't call your parents and say, you know, oh, we're running late. They're yeah. just waiting until you get there. And it's pitch dark. Like yeah. there's just and nothing there's around. There. And there's animals like snakes. and Yeah. yeah. When, we would, when we were in Mexico, like maybe six miles away from our cabin, 
I'm like, I hope this car starts because we wouldn't, we'd be stuck. There's no, there's no. Yeah, the rain cars. was the worst. And when it rained, like it, because it's all dirt road, like that red clay, yeah. your car oh, gets stuck. You oh, have yeah. to leave it and come back two days later after it dries up. You don't know who Elio Gracie is, do you? No. He's the founder of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, really? No. He had a big, huge farm in Brazil and he would like milk the cows and they would have acai and all this type of stuff. It was he's super awesome. Do you know what I should do? I should do a video of the things that I'm better at doing it than most Americans. So like milking the cow. Mm. If I put like if I go to milk a cow, like I'm a professional, even though I haven't done it <laughs> in so long. Cause it, that, that. that there is like a a certain way to do it that you wouldn't even think. I like bet. which I just you think it's just yeah. squeeze it. It's not like that. Yeah. If I was to peel like oranges, for example, like I can peel oranges really fast mm. without they call it. These are shorts that need to be. I I know. I've been wanted to make them. Yeah, because I can do them really fast while people would be like cut in the first one. What? Find me a cow. Yeah, there's no yeah, cows. Yeah, it's like everything, right? It's like, oh, that's easy, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, it's actually not that easy. It's not, especially like goats are easier to milk than cows. Hmm. Goats. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I love that. I love I love that we're getting into that side of it. So this <laughs> might uh, you might have to answer my next question here. Uh, favorite sport. Football, American football. football. Yeah, I suppose. I'm not a big sports no person. No, I, I like to watch basketball. I would say if I was to watch it. You had to watch it. If I watch it, yeah. You see everyone knows that. Um, yeah. What else we got here? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not going to ask you your favorite uh, sports team then, if you don't like sports. But what about um, the favorite place that you visited? Honestly, it's a hard one thing. Anything about favorite for me is hard to answer. You, yeah, it's, it's like, like them all, right? It's always like I, there's never just one, so it's hard to pick one thing. It like is hard. Anything like You're absolutely color, right. food, it's hard for me You're to pick right. one thing. But I would say I like because I like when I go to different cities, I like to go with an open mind. To I think someone, someone would just be like, oh, it was I hated it, it was boring. I at least experienced it, you know. But mm -hmm. if yeah, if it's a favorite as far as like I really liked it, I want to go back. Um, again, I like, I love New York city, but I wouldn't want to live there. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people just, it's that dream place. I would not like to live there, but I like to go there and spend even up to like a week, you know, Vegas. I like to do the same thing, like spend a few days in Vegas. Um, I like LA to live. I feel like it's just a convenience and they're like, you still have the diversity, but it's like peaceful enough where you could live and still have everything else that all these other cities have. You go to Vegas. If I, I'm there like more than three days, I start to feel like. Yeah. I'm not sleeping well anymore. Yeah. It's really getting to me. New York City is just like too much anxiety, too much yeah. honking mm. and traffic. Place. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, for but me, it's fun. We have a rule that is like with Vegas is you get there on Friday and you make sure you leave by Sunday morning. That's just yeah. oh, really? perfect for a weekend. You start, oh, I'm going to go there for a week. Like, all right, have fun, bro. But I feel like London and Toronto are like a really nice cities that Toronto. I visited. Yeah. They're like cleaner New York City. Mm. They call them like anywhere in Europe. Um, not yet. Now, have you been to Asia or no? No, I haven't oh, been yeah. to many other. I have been to every state in the U.S. to really? to do dog training. So I have, in the last year and a half, I have been to Damn. every state. I That's went cool. to like in the last two months, I went to Massachusetts, Florida, California, Hawaii, Alaska, and then out of the country wow. to Brazil, and I Tampa. Uh, in Florida, like a few different cities in, in Florida. And then I went to Atlanta um, and I'm sure I'm missing a few, like yeah. over the last two months. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't mind the travel mentally? It does sometimes get you a little bit, you know, like even just the last week, I already, I just came back from Minnesota yesterday, but before that I was in, I even forget where I go. Cause it's yeah. literally like oh, I was in Pennsylvania and then, I, and it's all across the country everywhere. So I have driven in and flown like all over the country. And you love that. But as far as other countries, I haven't been to as many yet. I do. It's there's something about it, like just like when I land. So I landed like almost one in the morning yesterday mm -hmm. in San Diego, and it's just like when you land and it's this whole new energy. Like I'm stepping my foot, my feet in like a whole, you know, a whole new ground. And then tomorrow I have all these people that have waited. Some of them have waited months, mm -hmm. and they drive from far away. Yeah. So there's people from here. There's people that drove. And so there's that excitement that I'm bringing myself and my training and my energy, like to meet yeah, these you new have people. A purpose, right? You're on. You're, yeah. You're there for a I love. I honestly do love it. Like it's so crazy. Like I will fly overnight, fly in the morning, whatever. I so I land at any given time, whatever I need to do to get there, you know, and and do it for my class. Because I have so many things back to back, other things that I do. I have seven dogs. Like I said, I have so many other things. I'm working on products and 
Yeah, you're doing do a you lot. Do you recommend that Joel do a tour? Oh yeah, I think you know that's if you when when I started to do it was before this round. I did it years and years ago mm -hmm. because people started asking. And when I started to do it, there's definitely an excitement about it, something exciting about it that really, you know, makes such a huge difference. Like you're no longer just like a local dog trainer. Even when you're doing on social media, I think that's a little bit different. But like if you're just anything that you do, it's only in one place. It's too limited. When it's such to bring it to other people, yeah. they like they especially when they watch you. People that have been watching you, they like they get it. to actually work with you in person, and they maybe never thought that it would be possible. And now yeah, they now it's like true. if it's like, oh I'm gonna pick a few other cities now. Everybody mm. in the whole world are like, wow, maybe he's gonna be here one day. Because like with me, I get a lot of people, please come here, please come here. I think more than what they would tell someone else, someone else, yeah. because they don't expect that someone else are going to be doing that. But they already know I do it. Going, so I do it. Yeah. Meeting. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It kind of keeps people it. like with that hope and idea that they can see you and you, they can. Yeah. You, know, you bring it to them. You bring yeah, yourself I there. I, I think like he well, travels the world differently than you. He has a purpose. Like you would travel the world and just I be like, oh, yeah, I'm freaking going to here and I'm going to sit by the pool. Like it's I a different travel, thing. I, I literally go. I don't travel the world. Like I have to go to Hawaii to see my dad in Maui basically. And I go to work stuff. Like, Tennessee, oh, yeah. Chicago, whatever, like yeah. wherever I have to go for work. So like, unfortunately for us, we just love Maui so much. We just keep going back. Yeah. And we're like, oh, should we go to the South? We're like, ah, let's just go back to Maui. And then everyone loves it. So we just go. Yeah. So we should probably, but we want to have, uh, we keep joking that we're going to go to Australia because like there's a lot of Australian followers on this one. Mm -hmm. And um, but right now we're just doing a lot of talking and not doing a lot of traveling, but we should do it. Yeah, it's really fun. Bro. And I, I know I sometimes I would do my like I was scared of my classes month in advance now and then it, a month like months in advance like sometimes like I have classes that have been sold out now that almost sold out all the way for November like even end of November so for, for Florida and then like you know Arizona so they we're scheduling 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 them like that but when it gets closer to the date is when I decide how long am I gonna go for gonna go there for yeah so if I have something happening in my personal life or something that I want to do for fun like I went to Brazil mostly for fun. Yeah. So that means it was right after Alaska. So I decided that I wasn't going to go, I wasn't going to go to Alaska and spend several days because I have to get ready to go out of the country. So I went for a, on a 24 hour trip wow. all the way to Alaska. So I literally got there at midnight, did my training at 12 until three or six. I don't remember if I had one or two classes. No, I had two classes. So I did from 12 to six. And then by midnight that same day, I was flying back home. Man, do you, do you get, like, that's what people because do. it's either there and i could stay there and rest the next day or i can come home and get ready because three days later i have to yeah be it's sometimes what, like i'll hear interviews with celebrities and they're like yeah we're doing a book tour we're flying in at midnight and then we're flying out and i'm always like that seems horrible but like when you're busy and when you're trying to like do something that's kind of what you have to do yeah and i don't feel forced because i love what i do so it's like it's not like i'm Oh, I'm going to work for someone else and I have to do this, you know, like I chose to do that and it's either like I don't do it or I do less, mm -hmm. but I really want to accomplish all these things. So the only option is I, yeah. I yeah. do it all. Sometimes. Here. You're yeah. also tied to the facility, right? So you have a different. And the, f the kids. I mean, they're, they're, oh, yeah, it's, a, the it's a whole different, it's a different life. Yeah. I have a facility and blah, blah, blah. I mean, not a whole different life. It's a little bit different life. Yeah, he's doing his thing, man. But I think there's a bit of a, like a show because, you know, Joel used to be a um, killer whale trainer at SeaWorld, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's where you got kind of the like pushing back on the haters that have come there. But you you put the actual shows on in front of how many people, Joel? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hundreds? Thousands. So, yeah, so yeah. Thousands. So I think I was picking up on what you were saying with the spectators of your show that like, okay, I'll help train, but we'll also have people there becomes a bit more than just the dog training. It's a bit of a meet and greet, right? A little bit of everything. Right. Um, it's not just one thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. My my traveling, I I, I haven't been that. I, I'll go a place and I'll be like, this place is cool. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I like home too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Nice area, right? if you go to Mexico, you go to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go places. San Diego's cool. You like San Diego? Yeah. San Diego's cool. I like Mexican living here. here. Oh, yeah. Mexican food is the best. Yeah, it's the best. It's, it's, We're such Californians. People like, oh, like the Mexican food in San Diego. <laughs> no, That's a very I, San Diego people, thing to say. People in Mexico, they're like, no, San Diego is the best Mexican food. Bro, <laughs> San Diego is better Mexican food than Mexico. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, it's good. It's so good. All right. <laughs> it's so good. You want more? Yeah. I got more. Well, we got we to gotta wrap this thing up, bro.
Dog Daddy has yeah, things have, to do. Yeah, I have a shelter to go. He's got to go. Train. Yeah, he's got to go. All right. So All right. One more question for him. Well, how about you? Do you have any questions? Do you have anything? No, I'm I'm glad to meet you, man. Yeah, meet you. Thank you for having me over. Yeah. Yeah. It was really yeah. fun. I think so. We should definitely um, get plugged in with that product that you have too. Because yeah, let me bring it see, in so you guys can see yeah, it. Yeah, see what it is. Then let's stop it right now. Let okay. him do it because okay. we we we'll gotta pause it real quick. yeah pause it or so don't. I'll just create a different one. I'll we'll just create a different one. Just let it run. Okay. Well, or yeah, you can do a. Free, I don't want people to see it, so maybe we'll pause it. You it's don't want surprise. them to see it. No, they can see, but I don't. I'm not sure that they don't see the name or anything. Okay. They're gonna yeah. only see your reaction. They, this is going to be coming out soon, but I haven't released it yet. No one really knows that I have this coming out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's something. I, it's simple, but at the same time, my it's not simple because nothing about me is uh, simple. You know? Interesting. Okay. Let's do this because he's got to go. He's got things to do. Let's go. Let's do what he and he'll keep it out. You can like hold it up there while we react to it. What do you okay. Do? I'm gonna hold it. From, or Eric could hold it while we sit here. Okay. I'm gonna hold it from behind the camera. Great. And you guys will read the name of it. You want the name read? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, I thought you said you. But did. you cannot read it out loud. No, you're gonna. Oh, read yeah, it yeah, yeah. Yourself. Don't read it out loud. I right. won't. And then whatever we do, we'll cut out. If it, well, we will yeah. not can do anything. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And then if you want to like come back when or whatever, you want to do a video one or whatever, if you want to talk Let's... about this product once it's like open to the public or whatever, oh, yeah. all around yeah. us, we'd love to have you back. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead, leave your your comments in there. Obviously, uh, I'm sure you're probably already following Dog Daddy now, but if you're not. Check this guy out. Um, anything else, Joel? No, no. Oh, yeah. We're good. We're done. Thank you it's awesome you. to have you, and we do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thank yeah, you so much for stoked, having me. So stoked to, to meet you. With you bro. Yes. We want to go to that, that farm. So. We definitely have to. All right. Good deal, guys. That's it. Talk to you later. Love you.